Last year, Yashica, or a Hong Kong-based company operating under the name Yashica, teased a new camera launch under the motto, The Silence of Story. Now, I still don't really know what that means, um, and I doubt we ever will. When the teaser date finally arrived, Yashica unveiled the Digifilm camera Y35 on Kickstarter. The company received millions in crowdfunding within its first couple weeks, and then launched a second campaign on Indiegogo several weeks later, pulling in similar amounts of coin. Like many others out there, we were curious uh, about this camera, and we traded the money we earned from your precious clicks to back the campaign. And here we are, the Digifilm camera Y35. So the concept. Some people say it's a scam, but I don't really think so. Here's what I do know. The Y35 is a digital camera, but uses digital film. The Y35 is a small 1 over 2.5 inch 14 megapixel sensor and a fixed 6 millimeter f2 lens. It writes your images to an SD card. It's powered by two AA batteries. There are very few exposure controls. And this is really what you need to know. On the back of the camera is a compartment similar to film cameras where you can insert one of the Digifilm cartridges. These are about the size of an old APS film cartridge and connect loosely via six metal pins. Now, there are six Digifilm cartridges in total, black and white, ISO 200, ISO 400, ISO 1600, blue color film, and 120 format 6x6. These cartridges appear to apply a filter effect to your images when loaded, and there doesn't appear to be a limit on their use, such as uh, with analog film. Now let's talk about build quality. The Yashica Digifilm camera Y35 is entirely plastic, and not the thick, robust plastic like you might find on an entry-level DSLR. This is Carnival Prize plastic, the police badge and plastic handgun set you win for knocking over some cans with a beanbag. The lens barrel is also plastic, however Yashica does say that the lens elements are glass. On top of the Yashica Y35 is a metal hot shoe and a metal frame advance lever. You do in fact need to advance this lever to shoot another frame of Digifilm despite the camera being digital. Next to the frame advance lever is a metal shutter button surrounded by a metal toggle which is the on-off switch. It doesn't say it's the on-off switch, you just have to eventually figure that out. Uh, there is also an exposure compensation dial offering plus or minus two EV stops of compensation. Finally, on one side of the Y35 is a slider that opens up the Digifilm compartment. You can also put your AA batteries in here. Underneath the camera body is the SD card slot and a micro USB port. Now, let's talk about the performance. On the back of the Y35 is a sticker that says when the little light next to the viewfinder is red, the camera is ready to take an image. When it's purple, it has successfully taken an image. And then, a funny thing, the sticker advises, if the light is red but it won't let you take a photo, just keep trying and eventually it will. Kind of an odd thing to put on your camera. This, and this pretty much sets the tone for your whole experience with the Y35. When the company is already trying to warn me that I'm going to have to trouble taking photos with it, you begin to feel like maybe you were ripped off before you've even taken a shot. Here's the thing though, I haven't really had any issues uh, in that regard with taking photos. It's worked seamlessly. Um, and to be honest, the images aren't that bad if you're in the right light. The Yashica Y35 is probably equivalent in image quality to a budget smartphone from several years ago. Think maybe the Moto G4. In a way, it's kind of fun to shoot with. With no LCD uh, screen to chimp from, I was thinking more about my shots and my composition, even though I wasn't limited to a set number of frames. For $140 though, I feel like the Yashica Y35 should offer more manual control than it does. Some of my old budget smartphones from yesteryear at least offered that and cost less money at new at the time, but I digress. Taking my first shots with the Yashica Y35, I noticed something odd. When you see the red light and press the shutter button, it doesn't take the image straight away. The shutter clicks, but then there is a slight delay before the, uh, that little light they talk about turn, changes to purple. Sure enough, when review reviewing my first shots later on the computer, they weren't necessarily what I intended to photograph because I'd moved the camera thinking that the image was already taken. Once I learned I had to hold the camera in place for a, little uh, a moment longer, I didn't have this problem, but one shouldn't have this problem. Loading the, film, uh, loading the digifilm canisters is straightforward enough, and the colors on the whole seem okay if a little bit muted, but I also think that's kind of part of the effect. Exposures, however, are really all over the place. The Yashica Y35 can't handle high contrast scenes very well at all. Highlights are completely blown out and there's lots of noise. Um, but in the right light, you can get some nice looking images. That said, I don't think there was anything from features to image quality to ease of use that would really motivate me to use the Yashica Digifilm camera Y35 as my primary camera, let alone as a backup. So you can probably see where I'm going with this. Um, 
Some people have said the Yashica Digifilm camera Y35 was all a scam to take our money, but I don't believe that is the case. Clearly there's been some thought into the concept and it is rather fun to shoot with. You can also get some decent enough images if you try, but this is really a child's camera. There just isn't enough manual control nor good enough image quality to warrant buying this as your travel camera or everyday pocket camera. It's not as good as your smartphone, whatever smartphone you may have. It's just not worth $140. Now, not enough money has really gone into its build and specifications. When you look at uh, Zenit's Resurrection, for instance, and its partnership with Leica to develop a full frame camera, that seems infinitely more serious than this. If the new owners behind the Yashica brand wanted to make a serious camera, they would have been better off seeking investment or partnering with, it, partnering with an established brand that could share resources and technology and help them produce something that's a little more serious than this. The Yashica Y35 is just a toy. That said, this could be a great option for a child wanting to learn about photography. The Y35 does force you to think about composition and light and exposure, and because you can't view your images straight away on the camera back, it does force you to get on the computer and actually download your photos and create an image management workflow. Now, for a child taking his or her first steps in photography in the digital age, that's perhaps an equally, uh, as equally an important lesson as learning the exposure triangle. But again, not for $140. So here's the rub. They've sold this as a Yashica, but it blatantly isn't a patch on the quality of the old Yashicas. So don't buy this thinking it's the same old Yashica, but digital, it's, it's not. At the same time though, there is an interesting concept here and you can have fun with this camera. The concept just hasn't had enough resource to be fully realized. So if this new iteration of Yashica were to go back to the drawing board and come back with a more serious offering, perhaps partnering with an established brand in the imaging industry, I would absolutely give it another opportunity. But as it stands, the Yashica Digifilm camera Y35 just isn't up to scratch.